Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you for the continuation of Let's Play Fantasy Star 4. And with the end of the world not coming, thankfully, that means we can continue on playing this. So, I had the opportunity to do some grinding and get everyone up to a, an appropriate experience level, everyone's at 8 with the exception of Khan, and everyone now has appropriate titanium armor that can be bought here in Tanoi. Alex has hers, Grizz didn't need any because he already comes pre-equipped with it. We have Chaz, now he now has all of his titanium armor and his sword. And Han, who, as I mentioned before, cannot be equipped with titanium mail, but we do have two titanium daggers for him, as well as a circlet, which is the head armor that we can get for him. So, with that out of the way, we can now be able to move on. But before I do, I should mention this. This is something I never realized until a few years ago. Depending on the... you see the list of the names of the characters, where they are in this list will increase the odds of whether or not they will be attacked by the enemy. Which means, if you come first in the list, you are more likely to be attacked. If you're last in the list, you're the least likely to be attacked. So, we put Chaz and Han lower than Alice and Grizz, because Alice and Grizz are stronger at this point. Of course, Han is a bit of a weakling. So, yeah. Stupid lag. Well, at least we can move on to the warehouse now. And we'll have Grizz do his thing, and as you can see, it's a much shorter trip for him. And just like that, we can now enter the warehouse. Yeah, let's indeed go in. So there are lots of different places that we can go here in the basement, and a lot of treasure chests to collect. And there are some very, very formidable foes. These toadstools, for instance, these got things can cause paralysis on you, and so you need to be careful about those guys. Plus, they can hit you for a good deal of damage. A lot of the monsters here can hit you for pretty good damage. But thankfully, we got our first battle out of the way without much trouble. And we pick up an extra monomate. And we've got the same combination of monsters from last time. And a critical hit from Chaz, and of course, Salad proceeds to blow it. Thankfully, Han picks up the spare, though, but we're still fighting. And the blob is out, and Alice gains a level. So let's try and get to the other side, and now we have two blobs and two toadstools. And, yeah, come on guys, we need to hit them. Let's see if we can get them in this round. Oh, always nervous every time Haunt gets hit. And we get a Cure Peril, a Cure Paralysis. So, as I mentioned before, the Toadstools, they can cause paralysis, but I'm more focused on wanting to heal my party members, because every amount of healing is going to count in this place. Now, these guys are really annoying, the Ape Frogs. They, I think they do the most damage of the opposition here, and, yeah, 14 points on Grizz, who is already pretty strong, that always causes concern. Plus, in addition, they have a chance of poisoning you. So, we pick up 100 with Seda, which is always good. Money is always good. Well, in this game. Not, not necessarily in life. So now, we can now move on, and there's some more chests that we can pick up down here on this second set. And... Ouch. And the pain just keeps coming. So we're gonna need to heal Grizz after this round. Yeah, th that's pretty strange though. They, they talk about people wanting to lick frogs, but here it's the frogs who lick you. Try figuring that one out. <laughs> yeah, we have mice, but there aren't any mice that we actually fight in this game. And a full sweep of attack successful, but Han fails on that one. But Grizz picks up the slack with a critical attack. Let's try and cut these guys down, and that doesn't help. But that does, and this round is over, and we get another Cure Peril, and Han gains a very, very much needed level. And 500 more Meseda. And 
more opposition to fight off. That's so gross. I hope you guys aren't too squeamish by seeing the frogs licking us. I mean, seriously, who does that in real life? <laughs> Licking frogs. Why would you do that? And this time it's all about the blobs. So far so good. And this round is over. We've got those blobs down. And we get rewarded with an additional 300 Beseda. And like that, like I said, there are quite a number of treasure chests in here. There's a lot of goodies we found. And perhaps, um, I, I forget, I neglected to mention this, but you probably noticed already that... <coughs> Chaz can, now, his attack is so strong, he can take out the blobs in one shot. Provided the blow lands. And now we got a trio Toadstool. Oh crap! And Dallas is paralyzed. That's not good. Ugh, I hope I survive. Thankfully, I do. Han is definitely gonna need some healing after that round. I, uh, Rez is not gonna cut it. I'm gonna need to use a mono mate here. And you could probably think that I was gonna use the cure peril, but the thing is, you don't need to necessarily use the cure peril. The paralysis can wear off on its own if you keep walking around. Pay attention to Alice and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yep, there it is. Now she's walking again. I would have I would have used it if we had engaged in a battle before the paralysis had worn off. But other than that, you really don't need to use a cure peril. And we claim another victory, and we get another cure peril anyway. Oh, come on. Oh, boy. That makes me worry a little bit. Hopefully we can take these guys out quickly. Heal Grizz while we're at it. Oh, crap! That's not good! Um, no. Oh. No, thank you. Damn it. Yeah, I think we're getting out of here. I'm, I'm gonna pass on using the spare escapipe because, yeah, we're gonna use Henus, which is the same thing as using an escapipe. Ah, Han, why are you so weak? So that means I have to go to the inn and I have to go burn some money to revive Han. Yeah, because there are no reviving items yet and I don't have a reviving spell yet. I'm sorry you guys had to see that, but that's unfortunately what happens when you have someone that's as weak as Han is. He can lose, as you can see. If he gets swooped on, he's in trouble and... Two licks from those frogs means that we're having to start this place over again. Thankfully, this time we don't have to go for any of the treasure chests, we can just go straight back to where we were. Yeah, and I don't face any monsters on the first two floors, go figure. And we get a free turn to boot. So let's try and take these guys down quickly. Yeah, the thing about macros, it won't... Because it's an automatic attack, it's not set to, um, you're not going to have everyone not necessarily attacking the same character. They'll, they'll just do their own thing, depending on what command you've given them. And that was a bad miss, but thankfully, once again, Grizz picks up the spare. And we won this battle. And we finally get, well... There's an antidote there, but there's something better on the other side. And once again, more another ape frog and two more toadstools. More ugly licking. And Grizzly's level goes up. 
And he's at level 9, and I think we need to give him some healing. Yeah, not, not anti. That's, that's the antidote cure, but that's not what we need. No one's poisoned. We want what's in that chest, but we're gonna have to fight four carrion crawlers for it. We get a free turn. Yeah, th these guys do also show up, but they're not as frequent as the blobs or the toadstools or the ape frog. But they go off just the same, and we get 192 Meseta and 86 experience points out of it. And we finally get an improvement on the crown for Alice. We get a titanium crown, and now she is completely covered in it. And more toadstools to be worried about. At least one's gone. Well, at least I'm not feeling as worried as I was earlier, but maybe I should be after Han gets attacked. Thankfully, we won the battle, though. More healing. And let's resume. Yeah, if you wanted to, the two staircases are pretty much close to each other. And you can see we have a new treasure chest there, but we can't use that door. We've got to go over here. We've got to go through this burrowed place. Like someone took a whole set of explosives to it. And created this little detour for us. But of course, in order to use the detour, we have to get through the opposition. These guys are starters. And the frog is down, thankfully. So that battle is now gone, and there's another battle, but we get a free turn. Free turns are always good, but not if you miss. Oh crap, oh please don't attack on again, oh boy. It's always a nervous battle with Han around. But thankfully, we finally got the Alsh line. That's it, alright. And Grizz wants to be a permanent member of our party. And this guy has revenge on his mind. No, he was trying to be discouraging. But Grizz is trying to be encouraging. However, Alice has no problem with this, and he, I guess she wants to recruit Grizz on a regular basis. So, we're gonna use the other chest, and we pick up another Escapite. So, yeah, I think we're gonna use one this time. So now that we got the Elsh line, it's time for us to make our way back to Zima and Birth Valley. Um, now we don't have Ryuka yet, which is the teleportation spell, and Han Chaz doesn't get that to experience level 9. He needs 373 more experience points to get there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to use the... I could buy a Telepipe, which is the same thing as using the Ryuka spell, but I'm actually going to walk there, because hey, might as well get the extra experience while I'm at it. So, let's save the game. And now, let's head back to Zima and Birth Valley. So, back to the tunnel we go. No, 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 wrong way. Alright, this will definitely be a help for a pack of four Sane Newts. You might remember Chaz got felled by a pack of four Sane Newts in a previous video, but... We're much more stronger now, and we have much better armor, so... These guys will be pushovers, and as you can see, 
very helpful. 95 experience points and 160 Mercedes. That will go a long way. And let's go Bride Style. And now let's move on. That's the diversionary path. Wow, I was really expecting to encounter more opposition. Well, there's some. And as you can see, the carry-on crawlers, not much of a threat at this point, but they still do the catacree thing. And we shove them aside. Only to have them come right back! <laughs> But now we've got rid of them again. Let's see if that happens a third time. Well, it won't, because we just got out of here. I forgot how short this place is. Alright. Will we be walking to Zima? Will we get there by foot first, or will we get experience level 9? I guess we'll know eventually. Gotta imagine that Chaz is close to experience level 9, though. And a couple more sand crawlers will definitely help things some more. Or sand crawlers? Sand newt! <laughs> yeah, I used the names of the two monsters together there! So, my bad, sorry. So, past Krupp, past Molcom, and more opposition. Two crawlers in a locusta. And they're out of the way. And Chaz now has the Ryuka spell. So you know what? Let's go ahead and use it. Ryuka Wing, back to Zima. But before I go in, there's something else I want to show you. We could not have taken this path on the left, because as you can see, this bridge is out. That's the bridge back to Aieda, which was the starting town for this game. And so, we're not going back to Aieda until we finish the next part of the story. And we take care of this next pair of opposition. But yeah, not much threat. So without further ado, let's get the next part of the story going. Into Zima we go.